All right, everybody, this is Kimberly McGeorge, and today we are going to talk about, probably in two parts, because I have a lot to say about this, we are going to talk about quantum entrainment and memory hacking, um, kind of how things become group think, how things become uh, semi-cult-like, and how you can become more discerning when you are being under or have realized you've become kind of quantum entrained or entangled with something that you may not think that you have chosen. So we're going to be talking about all those things again, probably in two parts in our um, lovely foundational Exit the Matrix um, series. So stay with me and I'll try not to make it uh, too long. Like I said, I'll split it into two parts for you. All right. So first of all, the journey out of the game or breaking free from the game, exiting the matrix has to be navigated with discernment. And this cannot be achieved by aligning with or following beings or looking to beings as your teachers or your leaders who are actually operating as literal ghouls or zombies or NPCs or um, part of the AI construct, uh, vampires or any such siphoning entities. These entities obviously thrive on manipulation. They thrive on love bombing. They thrive on deceit. Uh, they're very good at energetic manipulation and energetic siphoning. And they definitely feed and take energy and merge with those that are unaware of their tactics and not only unaware of their tactics, but if you don't know what to do about it, once you discover it, then you're in the same boat. So the, their systems and are traps designed to keep individuals entangled within the game and unable to ascend beyond its confines and eventually, of course, exit the matrix or get out. So we need to recognize who this crowd is. We need to recognize who are the prankster beings, who are the deliberately deceptive beings. Um, some of them are unknowingly deceptive and under hardcore MK Ultra programming and those beings that are siphoning you. So large groups or even small groups often form around niche topics. And we know this, you know, conspiracy, SSP, UFOlogy, the paranormal, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Dogman, um, psychics, mediums, uh, what else? <laughs> the Matrix, you know, exiting the Matrix, uh, the light, you know, after death, the light tunnels, the NDEs, the QHHG people, et cetera, et cetera. And on the surface, you know, these people, these groups, these channels appear to offer empowerment or guidance. But instead, I consistently am seeing when I'm analyzing and running and looking at their frequency and looking at their pictures that they're attracting ghouls. You know, what is a ghoul? A ghoul is a low frequency entity that operates through fear and manipulation and is generally soulless. And it has a distinct look. And I'll be breaking that down in further videos or for their classes, you know, a zombie, those who are energetically deadened, mindless, following the crowd without questioning, uh, you know, again, those two are fairly emotionally numb and struggle with their emotions. A lot of them are addicted to alcohol and drugs, and they'll tell you, or they'll be using it on camera. Um, the AI driven construct or AI Borg beings, synthetic intelligences that mimic consciousness, a lot of them have what, what I'm seeing now, and I'm calling and coining an artificial uh, technological soul matrix, and I'm actually seeing that. Uh, and they lack that creative spark or fire creation being or soul essence. Uh, vampires, energy siphons, and literal of vampires. Uh, the avatars are often vampires. And then the soul is often vampiric or vampiric races as well. So they energy, you know, energy siphons that drain your vitality and sustain their own existence. In other words, they are generally very sickly looking, very white, very pale. I can think of one right now uh, that I showed in a recent video, I believe on my YouTube channel. I'm not going to name the name. And this person is definitely and obviously an energy vampire needs others to sustain. Uh, the prankster beings, just, you know, they can be elementals, they can be uh, forms of consciousness that have came into physical reality by uh, us feeding them their energy, but they're any entity or being that distract or mislead, 
they dance around, they play on vulnerabilities, they, you know, throw things here, throw things, you know, look over here, look over there. And they're there to distract you, suck your time and derail your progress. And then, of course, we have the paid handlers and the unpaid handlers, the known handlers and the unknown handlers. So, you know, there are a lot of MK Ultra, and I'm just using that word loosely because you kind of think you know what it means, uh, driven programming to influence you and steer you back to the herd and the low frequency mentality again. Some of them come into your life to be your friends. Some of them come in as clients. Some of them come in as romantic partners. They can be children. They can be family. They can be neighbors. They can be telemarketers, you know, but, you know, some of them are more major handlers and handlers can be running podcasts. Handlers can be teaching classes. Hand handlers can be doing psychic readings or going to all these seminars and blabbing on stage. And then we have the saboteurs that are used to distract you, siphon you, similar, but even more insidious because they're deliberately sabotaging you. Uh, and usually a lot of these people are narcissists as well. And you'll clearly see that. It's funny to me when a podcaster talks every time about their issues, their relationships, their health problems, and they ask every single guest about them. That's narcissistic. You're not doing that for the benefit of your audience. You're doing that to get free advice without pain and free healing from all the people that come on your show. It's ridiculous. Um, and then we have those in victim, victimizer programming. By the way, obviously, these categories can overlap and you or others can be more than one. And but the ones in victim victimizer programming are definitely tend to be narcissistic and they need a savior. They seek a savior. They're seeking the quick answer, the magic pill. And then there's just simply those who are refusing to do the work. They're charging money for nothing or they're paying money and getting nothing. You can be on either end of that equation. So it is very important, in my opinion, to um, learn to identify the random strangers and beings who come into your life or come across your YouTube channel, come across your path, and um, at least recognize them would be the first step. So again, these groups can appear to be vibrant and loving and light, love and light, love and light. I love that. Anyway, uh, uh, I could go further. I could say team light, but I, but I won't. Oh, wait, I did. Uh, these groups may appear vibrant and active, but their true purpose is loose, just to harvest energy and maintain control of the narrative of your life, of your spiritual growth or lack of it. And then again, you know, fire creation beings with their higher frequencies and inherent, so you know, sovereign sovereignty do not fit into these dynamics. And so when a sovereign being or a fire creation spark being comes into these groups, or comes across these groups or comes into these beings awareness, you know, all the categories I just talked about, they often do not fit into these dynamics and they're quickly targeted. Uh, they are bullied or they're driven out as I've recently experienced for no reason. So there's this mob mentality. If you don't like my friend, I don't like you. Oh my gosh, you guys like grow the F up, like have your own mind. You don't have to be under this like, blind following and blind allegiance have you looked at your friends you know maybe you need to look at your friends too and it's not even about liking it's about everything can be known and all frequencies can be read so again and i know you know and understand what i'm talking about if you are a fire creation being and a growing awake fire creation being because you can be a asleep dead in taken over possessed fire creation being which again i've, I've briefly alluded to and that's a whole other conversation and massive you know, talking about, you know, information, but true spark fire creation beads cannot endure long in these environments or in these groups. They won't like the conferences. They're not going to want to continue to hang out. They're not going to feel comfortable. These will not be their people. Um, their light and frequency and expansion and the power that they hold are incompatible with the structures maintained by these lower density beings. The very presence of a fire creation being disrupts the energy and makes these beings, especially they're so massively possessed without knowing it, um, it makes them uncomfortable. It blocks their siphoning. It interferes with the control systems and it makes uh, the fire creation beings become a threat to the status quo of these groups. Uh, and you can substitute conferences, podcasts, you know, whatever you like. So again, this incompatibility often can lead to rejection. The group or its leaders ostracize the fire creation being. Targeting attempts are made to siphon their energy or sabotage their path. 
um, or, you know, put them down or scream at them on air or bully them. Uh, and we've seen this, you know, you, you've seen it happen to me. Uh, self-driven exit, which is absolutely the best. And I've already, you know, extracted myself and I continually say, you know, everybody's like, you're part of the SSP. No, I'm not. I'm not part of that group. I've never been part of that community because I see the horrific mind control and brainwashing and cult mentality and dysfunction and false memory and lack of knowledge of how this reality works and how they work. And so I can't be part of any community like that. So again, the fire creation being often senses this misalignment and you will remove yourself. And I see that a lot. A lot of people end up with me that have removed themselves from this group. So, you know, again, fire creation beings are sovereign and, and they have a sense of being sovereign and self-empowered. They don't need a group. I'm not saying they aren't part of groups or they don't have friends. I'm saying they don't need to sell their soul or um, be in misalignment to be part of these groups. Again, they don't want their energy drained. Um, they don't want their light siphoned to fuel the group or feel the group energy. There's a loss of resonance. They don't want to have to lower their frequency to match the collective of these low frequency groups. And these groups are very low frequency. You can look at them. You can look at the pallor of their skin. If you understand Chinese medicine, you can look at the lack of light in their eyes or the actually taking over of the possession of these beings leading to, you know, the people in these groups, they stagnate, they circle jerk each other. Um, they regress in their spirituality and then re-entrapment becoming ensnared in the very programs and patterns they seek to escape. So a lot of people have came out of religion and then they end up in these cult following, twisted, low vibrating, um, backstabbing. A lot of these people backstab each other, you know, they kiss, you know, what to their face and then they, you know, the knife is in the back and they do it to each other over and over and over again. And you can hear it and watch podcasts where they're openly doing it to quote members of their same community. So again, I would say, and I'll probably wrap it up here and then, you know, do a part two either now or, or later, but, you know, so trust your, trust your own knowing, first of all, trust your knowing of what you're looking for in your own frequency. Fire creation beings operate at a unique vibrational level. You have a unique resonance um, leave the spaces that feel misaligned, no matter how enticing they seem, no matter how long you've been part of them, no matter if your friends are there or not. And before you even get involved in a group or give your money or give your time or pledge support, discern the group dynamics, observe the behavior of the group and the individuals in the group. Does it foster true individual growth? This is an individual journey. You are not going to get out of the game as a group, as a membership. Um, does it reinforce dependency on their leader or collective narrative? Or are they teaching you how to be sovereign and how to craft your own path? And then avoid energetic siphoning. Even watching these podcasts, you're being energetically siphoned. Protect your energy. Use shielding techniques. Intentional grounding. Hold your body. Most of these people aren't in their body. Uh, practice is to restore yourself when, it, when you felt like you've been merged with or depleted or hit by them. Um, and engage with the authentic beings that you come across or the authentic material. Seek interaction with beings and communities that resonate with the higher frequencies of, of truth because truth has a frequency and sovereignty rather than the frequencies of control or bullying or abuse and manipulation. And of course, always, always focus on your inner work. True liberation only, and I'm going to say this again, True liberation only comes from within. Develop your connection to your own spark, your own fire creation source, your own soul collective within you without relying on external validation or guidance. All of these people that I'm speaking of need a lot. And I think you guys have seen it and can see it in their uh, own voices. They need a lot of external validation and guidance. Therefore, that's why we have you know, these circle jerk situations. So fire creation beings are meant to disrupt, illuminate, transcend the matrix. Uh, this path is not for the weak. This path is not for those that are easily uh, discouraged. It often requires walking away from what appears to be popular, what appears to be comforting and easy. Um, liberation is not found in following others. It's, it's found in standing in the 
brilliance and the glory of your own light. Even when the rest of the game, the rest of the communities, and I'm saying that plural, seeks to obscure it. So remain steadfast to your own authenticity. Free yourself. Illuminate the path for others if you wish. Um, but be always ready, you know, to step fully into your own sovereignty and illustrate that path for others. So I'm going to wrap it here because I didn't think this would take 15 minutes to blather on about. So secrettoeverything.com, join my Patreon, Secret to Everything. There's a free level. Um, join my community, like and subscribe to this channel so I can make more videos. And thank you very much.